Say it. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it is Thursday. Do you have to do it the same way every time? Are you new here? I Are we doing it? Is that a thing? Or is that what we're doing? That's how I do it every morning. What do we do? You say good morning first and then I do good morning. Well, good morning. morning. Okay. I didn't realize we were creating a thing. <laughs> I can't take, oh wait, we're already home. I guess yeah. I didn't have to take it nowhere. I know it. So, beautiful sunny day. And even though we're getting a little bit later of a start, <clears throat> had some great fellowship this morning on the phone with a friend. Uh, made an amazing breakfast. And yeah, so now we're getting ready to go out and do all of the chores. And then we got some big projects to work on today. So... That, well, we think two projects, not the build, sorry, some other things are coming beforehand, but you have to stay tuned and check that out, but yeah, we're going to get it today, we have to, we only have until our live, because we have our live on the main channel tonight, so right. we'll keep this one fairly short, because I even contemplated not even doing a coffee chat this morning, because we go live tonight, but I'm like, no, because different people watch different things, so... Yeah, right there, baby. You processing that breakfast? I'm still burping it up. Mm -hmm. It tastes good burping it up as it did when going down, though. Yep. And, uh, yeah, we had a date night last night. We went to an amazing Casting Crowns concert. Just filled you up. I I have been a huge fan. And I, although I was a little disappointed at the end... Because, you know, I'm old school. I fell in love with them when they first came out. And so, of course, I'm more recognizing, you know, the older stuff. The original stuff. And they went off stage. I'm like, oh, surely they're going to come back and they're going to encore, you know. Because that's what, that's what bands do. And they did for one song. And it was. It was an oldie. And I was, oh, just rocking it out. Having a blast with it. And then they did it again. And I was like, but wait. They forgot this song and they forgot this mm. song and but and, and that's not to detract any from what they did do because it was all am amazing and phenomenal so uh met some really cool people from harrison that we sat beside and uh quickly made friends with them so if they're here this morning hello hello if not you'll catch it on the replay mm. but <clears throat> yeah just a good night yeah, it was. I mean, it's... I hadn't heard of them until, you know, obviously she introduced me to it. And I just great music and an even better message. Um, you know, and then to be able to go to the concert. And I think the coolest part about it, they've been doing this for 20 years. Like this, this year they're celebrating their 20 year. That's the whole name of the tour they're on. And, I mean, I was looking up some stats on them yesterday, even when we got home, you know. So, for them to be a really major band in the Christian music, you know, genre, mm -hmm. um, you know, like 13 million plus records sold, stuff like that. And for them to come to, like, our small town and play in what probably is one of the smaller venues that they typically yeah. would play in um, was awesome because... There wasn't a bad seat in the house. I no. mean, we were pretty ah. close as it was, but um, it just, it, it was more, it was a more intimate setting with the band and being able to listen to their music and hear their message. And it was awesome. I mean, I enjoyed it very much. Solicit, mm -hmm. trying to get me to buy stuff. I ain't doing it. No, because um, I bought enough stuff. Yeah. Last night, he literally is like, you've loved this band for 20... I'm going to cry. Why am I going to cry? Mm. Um, <clears throat> 20 plus years, buy what you want. Get what you want. And the first time, I walked away with just a shirt and a hat. And it's a cool shirt, guys. I love it. I'm going to wear it tonight on the live. And then he's like, I'm surprised you didn't like get more. And I was like, I can get more? I can get really? I can? And he's the like... The look on her face was like, <clears throat> the best I could compare it to was, you know, uh, the times that you're able to take your kid to somewhere and 
you know, they want something that's symbolic like that. And you're like, well, just get what you want. And they're like, well, wait a minute. You mean like I don't have to get it from the clearance rack or the discount? Like, yeah. I'm like, no, you know, it's I knew what going to this concert meant to her and I was excited just to be able to share the moment. I mean, a, a yeah. date night with my wife is always amazing. And, you know, the music was awesome. The me Like I said, the message was that much gooder. Um, and, you know, so to be able to see that joy on her face, you know, like, not that she needed my permission, but it was one of those that she's like, really, you're going to let me get in? Because I'm such a miser. She could have like bought the whole souvenir table as far as I was concerned. Because, like, she's, you know... She's talked about them before, and then when the opportunity came uh, for a concert to be close to us, I was like, absolutely. Like, she'd actually bought the tickets before she told me about it, which I was fine with. Because, um, like I said, it's when you know, you know, like I know how significant that that was to her, knowing that she has followed them from the beginning, then absolutely. You know, it, it, and I know that if there was a chance that something came up, the same for me, you know, she would be going even if she didn't totally understand it or, you know, had never heard of it or whatever. So uh, just another reiteration of how amazing we are together and meant for And you had fun. I saw you clapping. And oh, yeah. It, yeah, it was a great concert. I, yeah. I, you know, like I've got nothing against, you know, I mean, I... I don't typically listen to that music all the time, um, but they're a band, honestly, guys, that I could listen to all the time and put it on my headphones mm. and go, you know, like, it, their music is so diverse, you know, and different things, like, I don't know, I just... I I love them, like, one of the very first songs was, um, Can Anybody Hear Her, or Anybody See Her, and um, I remember hearing those lyrics and thinking... I identify with that. Like I, that's me. Um, you know, being from the wrong side of the tracks, uh, doing my time in foster care, doing my time in, um, you know, j just not being that privileged young person. And to hear his words and feeling and knowing the judgment that the church put on people the way, you know, he was basically calling out the church. Uh, and I don't mean the church as in like your spirituality, but the people that attend church for their own gratifications, their own uppity ups, their own um, ability to judgment and put themselves above other people. When someone's hurting, someone is in pain and no one is reaching out because of the way she looks or because of her choices or because of she's on the wrong side of the tracks. And it just resonated with me. I was like, who are these people? Like, and then you listen to another song, you know, and he's asking, you know, if, if we're supposed to be the church, why aren't our arms reaching out? Why aren't our lips moving? Like it just, he had such a strong message that I quickly gravitated towards them and just fell in love with their story, fell in love with them as people. Um, they all are still involved in ministry. Uh, it, it's just, if you haven't heard about them, go check them out. Cause they, they're doing, they do some really cool stuff. They, they do. And like I said, their, their message and the way that they put it out there, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and obviously it's probably hot. Um, you know, being Christians that we are, um, you know, but I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to explain without feeling, you know, like you're going off the wall part of it. But it, I think that's what makes it easy for us to be Christians is it's honestly it's all about, you know, like just being a good person. And like I watched the, you know, because they didn't play that song last night. So she's like, babe, you need to watch this. Like there's a video you know, mm -hmm. go watch the video, pay attention to what's there. And, you know, that is the, uh, for me anyways, that's, that's the basis of being, you know, a, a good Christian is just being a good person, right? You've got to start off with that part of being a good person and not just being selfish. Um, you know, and, and I think that that's where, 
you know, and, and this always ruffles feathers of people, but today's society is everybody is so selfish. It's all about me, 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 being individuals, not understanding the group. And that's been, I think, the greatest blessing of us starting our YouTube journey mm -hmm. and uh, the people that we've been able to meet, you guys watching this, the interactions that we have with you, um, and then the other YouTubers in the, in the homesteading community, right? That we all are about helping one another more than we are about helping ourselves. And when we reach out to say, hey, we want to help you, there's no back incentives there's no like we're not doing that to receive anything it's about what can we give and that was a really big thing of their message last night at the concert was you know being more giving without the expectation of receiving something because mm -hmm. to me to do something with the expectation of receiving something removes the whole meaning of why you're helping somebody you know and, it's, and, and it's, everybody's situation is different. I understand yeah. that. And, and, you know, you can only do what you can do. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing to learn on, you know, for your mental health, right? You know, not only your spiritual health, but your mental health is know your limitations. And, and even if you've got to get outside that boundary every once in a while, you know, that's where your faith and, and just, being a good person is going to work out for you in the end. And, you know, uh, and we, we, I mean, one of the things too, and yes, we know that salvation is through Jesus Christ and we do not make it to heaven through our works. We get that. I don't want anybody in the comments going, no, it's not about everything good that you do. It's not, we know that, but how else? And I don't want to say how else, but when when you're exhibiting the love Jesus Christ gave to everybody else and everybody <laughs> alive, then how better to express that than to also show love and also give and also. So it's not like you're doing works just for your salvation. You're doing works because one, it helps you to fill up two because you're you're showing love. And, you know, so it's, it's not that we think that by good works alone, no, we, we get it. So I don't, yeah. I didn't want everybody being like, oh no, you don't have to do good. Yeah, we get it. You don't have to do good works. You're not based and judged on it. It is all on salvation. We get that. But, um, for us and how we interpret it <clears throat> is being good people and, and striving because we're not perfect. Clearly we're not perfect. No one's perfect. Um, I don't want to. There be was perfect. only one, you know. But it's, I think, where we have found our home within the homesteading community. Are you all right? Are you going to burst off? It's with whatever some you name? put in that breakfast. It's got all the burnt powders. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the homesteading community just exudes that. Um, it, I don't sit here and pretend to know how or why, other than we value the simple things in life and. When you value the simple things in life, the things that are enjoyable become more simple yeah. and basic. It, it, I and think. I think that's that's what a lot of it boils down to is just simplifying your life. You know, you can watch all these videos and seminars and read all these books and do all these things like how to be successful, how to do this, how to the, And, you know, it's the simple things, guys. It, mm -hmm. it really is. And... You know, if you don't have to worry about trying to do a competition with your neighbor of, you know, who's got the, you know, Best prettiest car. lawn or yeah. biggest lawnmower or any, you know, like it's, if that's what makes you happy, then that's what makes you happy. But the, the purest people that we've run into and that we have interactions with are the most simple, are the yeah. most down to earth and... And that's why we resonate with them so well is, you know, we keep things very simple because I, as we both have lived our lives, you know, right, we've been in those times where we've made things way more complicated. Mm -hmm. I know for sure I have. Um, and, and when you start overcomplicating everything, it just makes... Muddies it up. Yeah. And it makes that daily struggle that much more of a pure struggle and... You know, you're not comfortable, you're not you're not content. And you might get that endorphin high from that large purchase, 
But it doesn't last. It it doesn't. Yeah. It it doesn't fulfill you long term, because by the time you get your first payment on it, you know your remorse and your excitement is over. You know, I mean, maybe it's not. I don't know. Yeah. For, for me, it was like it's, I. I just and yeah. there is there's a lot to that whole like buyer's remorse type deal, right? And you know that's. I think that's one of the big things, you know, obviously that I love of our property here at our homestead that we're building mm -hmm. with our own two hands. Um, it ain't perfect. And, and you know, I, I always, I look at it and it's, it's a growth thing, right? Mm -hmm. If we would have gotten it and it was already done to whatever we had dreamed up it to be done and all we had to do was basically come in and live it, then, you know, what is it worth? Like, the journey is half the fun. Right. And, and so I think getting there and being able to develop it and, you know, there's times, yes, we pull in the driveway and we look at everything that's sitting around and we're like, oh my gosh, what have we done? I come in with blinders because I see all these little piles. And there was an amazingly wonderful comment from a subscriber. I can't remember if it was on the main channel or here. And they're like, you know, we love it. Everything is so neat and tidy around your homestead and it all looks so pretty and doesn't understand why so many homesteaders have trash everywhere. And, and I'm like, have you seen, I, I've got, like, it bugs me. Yeah, it I've is. got to drive in the driveway and I know they're temporary. Like I know that these piles and yes, if it comes to straight mm. kitchen trash or regular, no, it's got to go. I don't allow trash per se, uh, but it, we, I think it comes from that feeling of resourcefulness and not wanting to throw away something that could be useful, which in itself is a very fine line. That's a very fine line between being resourceful and being a hoarder. Yeah. And so, but we do part with certain things. Uh, and we know it's temporary. We know that, you know, the piles will start to dissipate as we get infrastructure done and and it doesn't mean that we don't get stressed out over the amount of projects that we are in the midst of working on. We do. You know, there's days I wake up and I'm like a little overwhelmed. I don't want to YouTube. I don't want to work. I don't want nothing. I don't want to do anything, you know, just to let my brain kind of settle because my brain will be going 100 miles an hour all day long. And but when you stand back and you look at the grand scheme of things, the joy outweighs any minute little bubbles of stress that pop up. Um, it's just something to be grateful and thankful for. Oh yeah, and hmm. there's splinter from under here. He's already a hot mess, y'all, this morning. Well, I am sitting in the sun, and you have it nine thousand degrees in this house, so I'm I'm dressed to be outdoors, not indoors, and I'm sweating like <sighs> profusely. I'm comfortable for a change. I know. That's why I'm sweating. I know that if I'm sweating, she's finally at a point where she's like, oh, I'm nice. I'm good. And I'm like, I can't breathe. Yeah. But. I don't do cold very well. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, and I'm looking outside. I mean, it is a gorgeous day. The temperature's a little, you know, like the sunshine and everything's kind of a little deceiving. It's still a little cool, but it's going to start warming back up now. So. Yes, um, thank you. And, you know, we've we've got projects to get on today. Hopefully yep. we get both of them done. Oh, I think Or we will. a good portion of both of them done. It's not my first rodeo building what we're going to build today, y'all. I've built it before and I built it by myself. So building it with him is just going to be that much better. Yeah. And we're quickly getting to the point where my friend Vinay and her husband Eric are coming to visit the Ridge. Fene and I have not seen each other in 34 years, guys, 34 years. Um, we were cheerleaders together, but she was two grades ahead of me when she graduated. Of course, you know, everyone takes off and goes and lives their lives. And um, I am so looking forward to their visit. It's not even funny. <laughs> like, I bet we're going to be like two schoolgirls. Like, which oh. cheers do you remember? You know, no, doing cheer day. And like, like I, I totally anticipate just a giddiness of childhood laughter and fun like it used to be at our <laughs> summer parties. And um, I just so looking forward to it. And so that's why the big push to get the new site. I'm tearing up. I'm just, I'm like a hot mess this morning with tears, y'all. Yeah. So we want to get the new site um, 
for the nugget done up. There's, mm. you know, I, I did the clearing for the most part. We I had that fire the other day and got a lot of that brush burned up, but now it's going to be go in. I want to try to level it a little bit, um, you know, get the, the entrance in and out of there a little more solid and then we're gonna fire up the wood chipper and i think the solution for right now ultimately i want gravel in there at least yeah. where the nugget's gonna sit yeah um and but until we're ready to do the gravel and you know i need to push the leaves back some more and we've we'll got just, an indoor outdoor carpet camping yeah. carpet we'll put down we'll get the wood chips down so that it's not a direct mud surface <laughs> Uh, I, we're not anticipating any rain for a little while, luckily, because, yeah, the amount of rain we got the other day for it being pretty much a full 24-hour rain yeah. was insane. It was a so. lot. But it's I'm excited because I, you know, I, I just want it to be so cute and comfortable for them. Of course, I'll go through and do, a, you know, a full-on, you know, clean again of the nugget and get it stocked and I want to put goodies in there and you know just have everything be just a perfect little Airbnb type setting for Eric and Benet so that they are comfortable and happy and yeah it's mm, it's gonna be fun guys I'm so excited we're down to like what's Thursday Friday Saturday three more days ah! <laughs> I'm excited I'm okay excited. so with that guys we gotta go we, need we to gotta go, go to work summer. Yeah. So we we, do we and yeah we appreciate y'all coming and stopping and you know we like we try to make these daily guys but sometimes it's not every day so just try. stick around and keep an eye out and we never know what we're gonna talk about so yeah pop over for our live tonight um, yeah. six p.m. Central Standard Time uh, I'm gonna be wearing my merch ah! I'm excited to show it off because it's so me it fits me well all of them do all of them do. So, ugh. I'm just going to be a soppy mess today, y'all. All right. Jeez. Well, I'm going to go find some tissues here for the crybaby, and we'll see y'all later. Bye.